Hi, welcome to a lecture on the equivalent circuit for a receiving antenna. To begin, recall the equivalent circuit for a transmitting antenna. This consists simply of a impedance, which we call Z sub A, and like any impedance, it is the ratio of the voltage to the current at the terminals. In other words, the voltage at the terminals divided by the current through the terminals. So you have a transmitter over here, and the antenna appears to be a load with an impedance Z sub A. Now, what is the equivalent circuit for a receiving antenna? As an equivalent circuit, a receiving antenna will appear to be a source for the circuit. So we can begin by recalling the equivalent circuit for an open-circuited receiving antenna, which is worked out in another lecture. This is simply the electric field intensity dot product with the vector effective length. And that will give you the potential across the open circuit terminals of the antenna. But what we want is the more general case where we have not necessarily an open circuit, but instead some receiver behind this thing, which itself has a load impedance and thereby allows current to flow. Such a circuit can be described as a Thevenin equivalent circuit, not the only way to do it, but the way we will do it. And a Thevenin equivalent circuit consists of an open circuit voltage and a short circuit impedance. V sub OC is the potential across the terminals when the terminals are open circuited. And V sub SC is the ratio of the potential to the current when the terminals are short circuited. So what is this for an antenna? Specifically, what is this for a receiving antenna? Well, spoiler alert here, the open circuit voltage will be the open circuit voltage that we've already worked out. We already know the answer to that part. What we will show here is that the short circuit current is equal to the antenna impedance, specifically the antenna impedance when transmitting. So the transmit impedance will turn out to be the Thevenin impedance of the equivalent circuit for the receiving antenna. But there are some caveats and some assumptions embedded in this commonly used model. And so I'm going to show you the derivation so that you can be aware of these limitations. We begin with linear circuit theory, where we have a good old two port. It's linear and time invariant. Over here we have port one with a voltage V sub one and a current I sub one with reference direction as indicated. And on the other side, we have port 2 with voltage V sub 2, current I sub 2, uh, with polarities and reference directions as indicated. Now, it's well known that any one of the four quantities, the two voltages or the two currents, can be expressed as a linear combination of two other quantities. And there are myriad ways to do this. The one that's convenient in this case is as follows. We can say V sub 2 depends on I sub 1 and I sub 2. In other words, the voltage at port 2 depends on the current at port 1 and port 2. So we have the combining coefficients Z sub 2, 1 and Z sub 2, 2. Now, for the moment, these are just constants. But you can see that the units of these constants are going to be ohms. Similarly, V1 can be expressed as a linear combination of I1 and I2 using the combining coefficients Z sub 1, 1 and Z sub 1, 2. Now we can start writing down some relationships. For example, Z sub 1, 2 can be written or defined as V sub 1 divided by I sub 2 in the special case where I sub 1 equals 0. Well, in this case, V sub 1 is V sub 1 when port 1 is open circuited because I sub 1 is 0, and I sub 2 when I sub 1 equals 0. And we've used notation in previous lectures, which reflects these special conditions. For example, the numerator we have written down in previous lectures as V sub 1 super R. And the denominator we've written down in previous lectures as I sub 2 super T. Similarly, we can define Z sub 2 1 as the ratio of V2 over I1 in the special case where I2 equals 0. Well, this is simply V2 when port 2 is open circuited, divided by V1 when I2 equals 0. In terms of notation used in previous lectures, that's V sub 2 super R divided by I sub 1 super T. 
Now, since we required this to be a linear time invariant system, reciprocity applies. And the form of reciprocity that we're going to use here, or the specific statement of reciprocity we're going to use, is this one, in terms of the quantities that we've identified above. Now, let's rearrange things a little bit. We'll just rearrange the four variables in this expression as ratios here. And then we note that v1 super r over i2 super t, well, that's just z12. That was identified up here. And v2 super r divided by i1 super t is just z21 that we found right here. So what we have found is that z21 equals z12. Now, this is generally said to be reciprocity in circuit theory. But we see here that reciprocity is a more general idea, and this expression is simply one manifestation of that more general idea. So, we want to apply this to antenna theory, and a way that we can do that is to define the linear time invariant 2 port to be this thing, for which port 1 are the terminals of an antenna, which is transmitting in this case. And port 2 are the terminals of an antenna which is receiving in this case. And here I've indicated the terminals on the receive side to be open circuited. Well, I can write down V sub 2 equals Z21 I1 plus Z22 I2. And we've already determined that Z21 is in terms of the variables shown to the left as shown here. And I2 is 0 because it's open circuited. So we have simply V2 super R. And V2 super R is simply E super I dot vector effective length. So here what we've established, and this is no surprise, we're simply confirming our understanding, that the open circuit voltage in this case is the one that we expect. So that part of the equivalent circuit for the receiving antenna has been confirmed. But what about the other part, the short circuit impedance? Well, recall this expression for that short circuit impedance, which we've already developed. And the numerator here is V sub 2 super R. But the question that remains is, what is the denominator? In other words, what is I2 when port 2 is short-circuited? If we can answer that question, then we can work out what the short-circuit impedance is for the equivalent circuit of the receiving antenna. To do that, we start with this expression. If port 2 is short-circuited, then V sub 2 is going to be 0. We're looking for I sub 2, and I sub 1 is going to be I sub 1 super T. So here we'll just solve for I sub 2. We get minus Z sub 2 1 over Z sub 2 2 times I sub 1 super T. We've already found an expression for Z sub 2 1. We'll substitute that back, and we find that I sub 2 equals minus V sub 2 super R over Z sub 2 2. So all we have to do is substitute that here, and then we have the short circuit impedance. So short circuit impedance is V sub 2 super R, and then the expression that we previously determined, but we have to do one more thing. We have to change the sign here, and that's because positive V sub 2 R results in negative I sub 2 with respect to the signs of the currents that we previously established in this diagram. So because port 2 is receiving, it's passive, the current actually flows in the opposite direction. That is, we end up with a minus sign on I sub 2. So that's why we have that plus sign there. So we evaluate this thing and we get simply Z sub 2, 2. In other words, the short circuit impedance that we're looking for is just Z sub 2, 2. So now we know Z sub C SC, but we have it in terms of a two port. In other words, this two port system that we were considering here, but what we want it for is the specific antenna, which is a one port device. So we have to address that little awkwardness. Well, we return to the LTI two port definition, but in this case, we let the antenna of interest be transmitting and the other antenna will be receiving. 
So we'll have v sub 2 is given by this expression. i sub 2 is i sub 2 super t. We'll solve for z sub 2, 2. That's simply z sub 2, 2 equals v2 over i sub 2 super t minus z sub 2, 1 times i1 over i sub 2 super t. Well, this term here is simply the impedance of the antenna of interest when transmitting. This term here is modifying that impedance. And what we say specifically is that it is the mutual coupling contribution. Z21 is said to be the mutual impedance. So this thing here is mutual impedance. What we found is that Z sub SC, the impedance in the equivalent circuit for the receiving antenna is given by the impedance of the antenna of interest when transmitting, which we've been calling Z sub A. And then that's modified by this term here, which depends on Z sub 2, 1, and we call that mutual coupling. Now you might say, wait, we're looking for the equivalent circuit for an antenna exposed to an instant electric field, regardless of the source. Whereas here, we've assumed that the other antenna is a source. So, can we make this model relevant to the case where the thing which is exciting the receive antenna is an instant electric field, and not some other antenna which is creating a field? Well, that's no problem. What we do is we just allow the antenna associated with port 1, the transmitting antenna in the original problem, or the receiving antenna in the scenario that we just looked at. And we uh, put that away at a great distance. So if the antenna is sufficiently far enough away, what will happen? Well, if the antenna is sufficiently far enough away, we expect that term Z sub 2, 1 to go to zero. Why? Because we don't expect that that distant antenna can somehow influence the impedance of the antenna of interest. That's another way of saying that if the two antennas are separated by far enough away, there's no mutual coupling because the mutual impedance, Z sub 2, 1, is expected to dwindle to zero. And in that case, it doesn't matter whether the instant wave was generated by an antenna or whether it was just some other source. The details don't matter because there's no interaction with the source. So under that presumption, the equivalent circuit for an antenna, which is excited by an electric field, that is, not due to something which might be coupled to that antenna, is simply the impedance of the antenna in transmission. So, as we promised earlier, here is the equivalent circuit for a receiving antenna with open circuit voltage given by the dot product of the instant electric field and the vector effective length and the short circuit impedance given by the impedance of the antenna when it's transmitting. If E super I turns out to be due to a nearby antenna, then we must remember that there is this contribution due to mutual coupling, as explained above. Also, if there are other antennas or structure nearby, then we have to remember to account for that. In other words, if there are other antennas or structure nearby, then Z sub SC is Z sub A in the presence of those antennas and structures. So if we have other antennas around, when we compute Z sub A, we have to do it in the presence of those antennas, and then that's what we include here. That concludes this lecture on the equivalent circuit of a receiving antenna.